So we're getting really, really geeky over here, and I don't know that your, your, your readership will want to hear or read this. I'll gladly talk about it. This is getting, getting into extremes of three theories of psychoacoustics that are unproven. I've so certainly I'm not got a gang of people who do care very much. Excellent. Fact. I'm glad you do care. My point, though, is if you can actually make a sound system that's lighting up the walls with an amplitude and phase response that matches what you're actually feeding to the listener, and then control it at the walls however you want, then you run a better chance of producing a sound stage that's really believable and having a wider sweet spot, because when you sit over here, you're getting sound from there, sound from there, and, and it's actually fooling your ear brain, I'll talk into the camera, it's fooling your ear brain into believing that the sound is here when it's not really there, it's coming out of the speaker and that speaker. And that's, that's basically taking the whole concept and precept of what the business has been doing for all these years and just flipping it upside down. And I equate that to two things. One is there's a, there's a time where we thought the Earth was flat. And then Columbus and a few other people went all the way around and said, well, wait a minute, it, we think it's round. And it really upset people and they actually hung them, burned them at the stake, called them heretics until somebody really proved it is round. Um, it's that fundamental. Or in what's going on in nutrition right now, where for years and years we thought that eating fat, fat food was bad for you, you should eat, should eat other things. We all switched to carbs and now everybody's diabetic. And now we're finally flipping back to people going, well, maybe we should eat less pasta and less rice and eat more bacon. So I know that because I went through that. <laughs> I'm eating a lot of bacon and no pasta and no bread. Um, so um, this, this is sort of engaging some new school thinking um, around how you drive the direct sound to the listener and how you drive the off-axis sound off the walls to guarantee a broader sweet spot and also guarantee more repeatable performance. So that's the other thing is by having a really even off-axis sound, you're less room dependent. Right. When you have sound that changes with frequency, if a room is very damped, you're gonna hear one thing. If it's very live, you're gonna hear a different thing because the off-axis sound is different. So this, is, this provides a more predictable character in a wider sweet spot. So that's that's my little spiel about that, and I can't prove anything of what I just said. It's all theories that I hear and read out there. 